gentlemen, you're welcome to the Pan-African Debate on your Pan-African channel, Afric Media. So we have one main topic to discuss for this edition, but we're going to first of all talk about the death of Queen Elizabeth, who died at the age of 96, something very remarkable according to her works around the world, activities not only in her country, uh, in the UK, but also on the African continent. So each of my panelists is going to talk about her today and what they remember of her. But our main topic today, we're going to talk about Cameroon and particularly what it concerns the indomitable lions. Can Cameroon win the World Cup Qatar 2022? That is what we are going to talk about. Is it far-fetched an idea to nurture or just a reverie? The hold the record to leave the, the first round undefeated in 1982 after three games. In 1990, Cameroon became the first African country to reach the quarterfinals after beating the holders, Maradona's Argentina, during the opening March. Cameroon's Olympic football triumph at the 2000 Games in Sydney was one of the indomitable Lions' finest hours in the world stage as the famed Central African nation dispatched Brazil and Spain and route to clinching to the gold medal. In 2003, Cameroon made it to the final of the Confederation Cup. They played just three days after the tragic and sudden death of one of the Lions, Fouy McRiven, during the semis against Colombia. Lots of football fans around the globe seem surprised with the wonderful performance of the Lions as put up during the final games, even though they had lost to France, a defeat that they attributed to the trauma following Fouy's passing. Football fans are almost unanimous that the team's declining performance in recent years is due to administrative and political interference in the affairs. But the glorious days should not be forgotten as they could motivate them to do better in the future with some hard working and determination we put in the team in order to get the best results they want. With what we read and follow on social media recently, the question that begs for answers is how feasible is the Football Federation's president's dream of the Lions lifting the trophy in Qatar 2022? And why Samuel Eto'o, former Table Lion, seems to be the only one living the dream that Cameroon could actually win the cup? Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're going to talk about, talking about the Indomitable Lions and what they have achieved before and what is possible at this moment as they prepare for the Qatar Games. 2022 so that is our main topic for today we're going to talk about football in cameroon but as i earlier said during the start of this program before we get to talk about football we're going to talk about queen elizabeth let's let me present to you my panelists those who are in the studio to talk about this topic with me today so on my right i have senior barista Asho emmanuel good day to you you're welcome to the program good afternoon emmanuel good afternoon Televiewers, good afternoon, fellow panelists. It's a pleasure being with you. Hope we're going to enjoy ourselves. Thank you very much for honoring our invitation. We have Mrs. Ka Joachim Quinivet. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Emanuela, for having me on your panel today. And good afternoon to all televiewers and to my co panelists. Thank you for joining us. We also have Mr. Kepe Ashu. Good afternoon. You're welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Manuela. Good afternoon to the millions of viewers around the world. And a special greetings to my co-panelists. It is always a pleasure to be here, not just to talk about Cameroon, but to talk about Africa. It is our sole and it is our sole responsibility mm -hmm. to tell our own story. If not, others will tell you the way they want. Definitely. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen and lady, for attending uh, to our invitation. So let's start by watching this video of Queen Elizabeth her life, her activities, and then we'll come back to talk about her before we get into the main topic today. So we'll be right back after this video. She died, her beloved Balmoral Castle in Scotland. The Queen, smiling, appointing Britain's new Prime Minister just days before her death, determined to do her duty, her final act in a lifetime of service. Her children, son Charles, now King Charles, racing to be by her side. Grandson William, now next in line to the throne, driving his uncles, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, to say their last goodbyes. Prince Harry, appearing distraught, arriving just after his grandmother's death was announced. The royal's grief, private, while in public, on royal gates, a simple proclamation. Queen Elizabeth II died peacefully, and as flags across the country were lowered, a rainbow magically rising above Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle. Crowds spontaneously singing the national anthem. This is the best thing we've always looked up to. It's just a sad day. Just a 
Which is very, very sad, dear. She's been a role model for so many people, so many people. Old-fashioned values, everything that we could ever have wanted and more besides. Grace. Tributes Grace. from world leaders, 12. including US President Canadian. Joe Biden, arriving hour by hour. So, Queen Elizabeth, so much more than Britain's longest serving monarch. A global icon. Good evening, Good evening Your Majesty. Diplomat and, quite simply, a steady presence in people's lives. Born in 1926, the third grandchild of King George V, for seven decades, Elizabeth would guide the nation and its monarchy through historic challenges. My Lord, pray be seated. And all that while balancing motherhood and monarchy, three sons, a daughter, and a daughter-in-law, Anna, whose death brought to the royal family. She embraced many changes, including the marriage of her grandson, Prince William, to Kate Middleton, and later Prince Harry to the American actress Meghan Markle. She celebrated the birth of 12 great-granddaughters. But in 2021, she lost her cherished husband of seven decades. Queen Elizabeth continued to inspire people around the world. Just this year, her platinum jubilee celebrated the military parade. Joined by three future kings, Charles, William and George, today King Charles will lead his country in mourning. His sons, William and Harry, united in grief. Harry travelling back to London this morning. The lot of their much-loved grandmother bringing them together. This is the moment, Savannah, when we say the... Thank you very much to the technicians for that video, which has a recap of who Queen Elizabeth was. Nine to six years. Let's begin with you, Senior Barrister. What do you, what do you, what do you remember about her? What would you want to keep about her? Her activities around the world, in Africa. What did she do that probably mapped you? Well, this is a monarch whose life has to be celebrated. Uh, I remember but particularly her firm stand on the Falkland Islands when the Argentines stood up to grasp this island and uh, this lady said, no way, you cannot take this island. And uh, She fought hard and maintained the, uh, the British control of, over the island. Uh, again, with the Scottish independence drive, she said, okay, if that's what you want, let's go to the, let the people decide. And well, the people decided to stay. So you see, she's uh, she's a really she was really a very hard lady, not wavering in any way. Uh, a woman of principle. I, rem I remember she refused to receive some world leaders. Said this one is a terrorist cannot enter my house. I think talking about Jerry Adams or something. <laughs> Some, it was a U.S. president. I would name, <laughs> give a name. Mm -hmm. a U.S. president whom she refused to receive. Mm -hmm. Uh, even in Africa, she did the same thing. Yeah, she received some leaders, some citizens, and refused to receive their leaders. <laughs> a woman of principle, in fact, uh, I admire her. In Cameroon, you see, this woman was here. I think she has visited all the Commonwealth states. Yeah. She was here in Cameroon. She visited southern Cameroon, I think, twice. I have images of her in Tico, uh -huh. at the Tico airport. Yeah. Uh, we have the botanic gardens today, thanks to this woman. We even sent her son to come and supervise the renovation works and all that. I think uh, she, she has tried to touch everywhere. Yes, she has left her mark on everything that had to do with Britain. Kudos, I think it's a life to be celebrated. Thank you very much, uh, Senior Barrister. Madam Joaquin. Um, if I should say something about the late uh, Queen Elizabeth, it will be that the English language that we are so proud of speaking <laughs> today is thanks to, to the monarch. You know, it, it's a language that I personally like so much. And this is because we were, you know, I'm not so proud about colonialism, but it's thanks to colonialism that we are English speakers and we have this culture, which we are so proud of and which is uh, uh, commended uh in the world and also what i admire about this woman is the fact that she with with civilization and modernization and, and the years that went by right up to the age of 96 she held on to old principles yeah. which to me sh should be something that 
uh, as a young woman or and as every other person should emulate you know hold on to your roots hold on to your culture it's not just about copying things that other people bring from their own uh, uh, part of it mm. right there in england there are people that today applaud her because she kept this part of the english people she never let it die mm -hmm. which is something that is um should be applauded definitely thank you very much mr Kipper. what do you hold or keep about her what would you want to remember to see who came before 1952 spouse yes, 30, 30 to 35 years before we even talked of uh, bringing me into circulation all I remember about these people is the years of colonialism, slavery, and slave trade. Nothing good. Apartheid passed through when he was queen. Mm -hmm. All the ill treatment that look at what Nigeria is today is an ex colonial, they say ex colonial of uh, Great Britain. You look at the ornaments on her, it's our blood, and all those things. Well, since in our tradition, we don't talk evil of the departed. I just say, may the land of her ancestors grant her safe passage. What can we say when it comes to it? Because we look at the number of years she was in power. We, their country is a kingdom, definitely. But we, when we look at our Africa and coming back to Africa, most of what we started with, our culture is made up of kingdom and chiefdoms. And we see that probably part of why their country is a little bit stable is because they have that kingdom and it is there. Everybody knows that it is this person. So people don't have time to fight for power. People don't have time. Everybody concentrate on what you're doing because you know that, no, this is the queen, this is the king, the person has to be there. There's no election that we don't even understand because it seems as if democracy has instead brought more harm than good. What do you think about the long reign in power vis-a-vis -vis our African culture? Because from the start, that is how we were. And it would have probably been peaceful if things were still that way. Because it seems as if most people don't understand mm -hmm. democracy. Thank you, Emanuela. I want to differ a bit from my uh, predecessor. Mm -hmm. um, it was thanks to this lady that uh, we are enjoying uh, what is left of our culture today. You see, uh, contrary to the other countries that impose direct administration, the, this lady said no. Indirect rule, let the people rule themselves. You see, even even the Nigerians didn't have that. Southern Cameroon enjoyed indirect rule. They maintained our chiefdoms, and we even had, in place of a senate, we had a house of chiefs. I mean, we have to give her credit. She decided to leave us as we were, because, as you said, mm -hmm. their own society is structured in the same way. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, I thought, she probably said, there is no need to dismantle this thing. Let the people govern themselves. The only flaw there is that at the end, politics uh, had the upper hand because they decided that they decided against all the evidence that Southern Cameroons could not uh, go to, uh, survive economically, mm -hmm. which was a lie because they had never given a farthing to fund Southern Cameroons. I mean, this is a country that was uh, running its business on its own. So how come at the end they say no? They are not economically viable. Before independence, they had four international airports. I mean, people who are not economically viable. No, there was something wrong. Mm -hmm. So that's the only flaw. But apart from that one, she did a great job. You can even see, look, let us take the two Cameroons. The Republic of Cameroon that was under France. Assimilation. Had, no, 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 no. Let's, I'm not going that way. The, the Republic of Cameroon that was under France had no constitution. In fact, they became independent without even having a president. They had no concern. Their concern was voted on the 4th of March after they had independence on the 1st of January. Can you see that? And their president was elect elected later, after independence. But Southern Cameroons had a constitution before independence. Others in council, 1960. Southern Cameroon constitution. So you see this woman, she was a visionary. She knew she was an astute administrator. She knew what to do. Compared to the other people, you can see that she did a great job. I think uh, we should give praise where, where it belongs. Hey, what do you think about the role of uh, uh, our African culture that was kept and probably things should go back to the way it was? Because now there's a lot of infighting. It comes to presidential position, the democracy. This is as if people don't understand because there's a lot of rigging as people are complaining. But then you don't have that a lot because everybody knows this is the queen and this is the king. And so you don't bother election or anything. 
well, what you are what you are declaring now is a result of uh, the failed uh, reunification because we have been joined with people who don't have any notion of traditional values. You see, well, while we were trained, we were brought up to maintain our traditional values. They were brought up to answer yes, sir. Mm. So <laughs> I mean, it's it's very evident that there will be what will arise from that can only be confusion. So. I think uh, we really need to re to sit down on the table and redefine this nation because uh, what we are having today is does not reflect us because even the francophones have difficulty. Their chiefs want to talk. They say, "Oh, you sit down. You are." I mean, well, I remember this woman from the from the south who told a, 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 a division officer, "I am not your subordinate. I am your collaborator, and not your." You see, that is an example of. The revolt that our society is having against the administrative structures that are in place. So we really need to sit down and have a rethink and redefine, you see, the, the, the government so that it suits our traditions, it suits our own society. What we have in place now doesn't. Looks like something we took from France and came and put here. Doesn't represent us. What do you think about the, the chiefdom and kingdom that, like, what is in the UK? They are really, there's relatively peace. When, but when you compare to African countries, when it comes to elections, there's a lot of problem. It seems as if the concept of, concept of democracy does not work well here. Uh, I'll begin by saying that there is relatively peace, as you said, relatively. Uh, this makes me to think that if the English people were really disgruntled about the reign of, of, uh, of Queen Elizabeth, we were definitely going to hear the voices rising. You know, it's okay to have a, a queen who takes care of the people, who is there for the people. It's not just about being the king or the queen. Are you the queen for the people? That is where the question lies. And uh, you know, when I look at when I look at our context uh, back here, we are in an informal monarchy because we are having people sitting in places that they have. Uh, title their thrones that they are not willing to let go of until probably they will pass on like Queen Elizabeth. But the question here is, are they for the people? When Cameroonians are raising their voices, it's not as if they are disgruntled about a person. They are disgruntled about the ways of the person. It's not hate for an individual. It's hate for the way this individual or these individuals carry on uh, activities. Yes, Africans used to have uh, kingdoms with kings and queens and all of that. But now when we look at what uh, colonialism did, especially in uh, English-speaking Cameroons, we were not ruled directly by these people. We were ruled, uh, they, they let, they let the, the chiefs stand in for the people. And it was the needs, the desires of the people that was considered. The trouble we have in Cameroon is just because English-speaking Cameroonians or Southern Cameroons is not reconciling herself with that idea of dictatorship with that idea of taking others i say dictatorship in quotes because we don't want to always say that is it they don't want to reconcile themselves with that idea of taking others from someone who takes others from some other person france did a totally different job and truth be told cameroonians will not applaud france the way they would probably be applauding uh, english-speaking cameroons english-speaking cameroons is very resourceful if we stand as a country, we're going to do great things. English-speaking Cameroons will do great things if they stand alone as a country. And that is what is bringing the rift in our nation. It is not because we are not a, in a monarchy, no. It is simply because the voices of the people are not heard. Uh, queen Elizabeth, being the queen of England, she was not the dictator of England. She had a bureau. She had these people with whom she consulted, and these people with whom she consulted spoke to her uh, from the voices, from the standpoint of the people. That is what we lack. That is what mo many African countries lack. That is what uh, many uh, 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 democracies that are indirect monarchies fail to understand. Monarchy is not dictatorship. That is not it. She, she was probably there as a, as a figurehead. I will not talk with 100% certainty because I am not an English person. I am not from England. So, but I know so far so good that she was there as a figurehead, as a figurehead, sorry, but she listened to the people, through the people that represented the people she was supposed to govern, which is what we feel. So we should not get things mixed up. We should not get things twisted. If we decide to have a kingdom, 
in Cameroon today, which I personally pray it never happens because everything has proven that if that is the case, things will go sour. It will really go worse from where it is now. But if that should happen in Cameroon, then we should be looking at a king or a queen that will be there for the people, not for themselves. I'm talking here about repatriotism. Thank you very much. What do you think about our chiefdoms, our kingdoms, and uh, looking at what's happening in England and the role she played, probably she, that should be what's happening here rather than what we have, which is not working. Let me come back to what the said. That uh, the, 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 the English ruled Cameroon, the Cameroon suite in direct rule, mm -hmm. and was not the same in Nigeria, as if it was a, it was a favor. They did that because they knew Cameroon was poor. They were not ready to give anything to Cameroon. The Englishman never loved the Cameroons. They are the ones who have settled in this mess we are today. We should say things the way they are. Why should we clap him for her? May I so rest in peace, that is all. They did not love the Cameroons. They led us into this mess. When it was time to share Cameroon, where was the Englishman? He abandoned us. Since this nonsense started, what have they said? What has that great? What did that great queen? What did that great queen say? Because they were botanical. Because our soil is rich, that's why the botanical was there. They didn't do it for us. Nobody tell all what they have taken from that place. All the the the, the, the conservation that they are bringing here in, in Cameroon. Nobody tell all what they have taken out of Cameroon. The white man has never done anything for free for the Africans. So Africans should put that in their mind. They did not do it for us because they love us. The Englishman has never loved the Cameroons. They led us into this nonsense that we are today. That we are today. That we can't look ourselves into our eyeball, eyeball to eyeballs. They maintain their, their kingdom as they what turn it true? into states. Yeah. Yeah. They maintain their gods mm -hmm. and they make us to believe that us is idolatry. Mm -hmm. Now, come on. May her soul rest in peace. And may the English people mourn the queen. She is, not my, she is not my queen. She's the, she's the queen of the English people. Mm -hmm. I have much respect for the English people. May they mourn their queen and long live their, their king. Yeah. Uh, you see, um, considering the Cameroons, I think uh, this woman has been, uh, this queen has really been true to herself. Um, I want to defy again <laughs> because. Uh, when you look at it uh, closely, you realize that England or Britain has not abandoned Cameroon. Um, they may have abandoned, they have abandoned Southern Cameroon, but they have not abandoned Cameroon. Today, like this, Britain has a trade agreement with Cameroon. It is the British. People don't say it. It's the British who are training the bees. They are the ones training the bees. Uh, we have a lot, a lot that the British are doing here silently. They don't publicize it. I want to differ that they have abandoned. You see, true to her conservatism, she probably told herself, we have uh, created a new nation out of the union between Southern Cameroon and the Republic of Cameroon. They don't stand by it. And I think that's what they are doing. I remember again, some British diplomats said, uh, they don't want to be reminded of their past, of the past, of what happened in our country. They are concerned with going ahead. Forget the past. See, it is a conservative method that has led us to where we are because after the 1961 independence and failed reunification, she decided, Britain decided to side with the new nation. So it is against Southern Cameroon, but sorry, we have a nation called Cameroon, Republic of Cameroon, and uh, that nation is benefiting from Britain. So we have to Take it as it is. What do we call benefit? Do they come to train people for free? They do. Unfortunately, barista, these are, these are the informations that you political parties should not be giving to the people. The relationship between nations are never free. Because they keep on telling us they give us aid. They give us which aid? Nobody is telling us what is happening in the back office. Nothing is free. Not tell them. Because the common command will believe you, and tomorrow when you're in power, they'll put you to ask, you will not be able to deliver. Nothing is done for free. They don't come here to give us anything for free. No, like there is an exchange of something that the common man is not told. The British, the Englishman never loved the Cameroons. It is my stand. I would like to come in here to say that mm -hmm. whether British 
or French, you know, whether Britain or France, mm -hmm. we're talking here about Cameroon. Mm -hmm. um, from my perspective, which I think is a perspective that a good number of reasonable Cameroonians hold, we don't, we don't need these people doing things for us. When, you know, because we are, we are actually living in neo-colonialism, we, we are still, you know, when, when, when they are stepping in to build our roads, they are stepping in to train the, the army, they are oh. stepping in to, to do this, stepping in to do that, we are still their child. That is what it speaks. When the Frenchman feels so comfortable to come into Cameroon and it is from his lips probably that we are getting reliable information about what is happening in our country, that is enough sign that he has more access than we do as Cameroonians. When do we mature or when do we grow up? Like I said earlier on, yes, I love English language. That is what I can retain from the British people. But apart from that, I am not a fan of colonialism. Worst of all, neo-colonialism. We, we should not be kept in a box where we have people that, we are tra that are trained to be contractors, engineers, left and right. They ship them abroad, and then they come and impose themselves under, under the curtains of help. They're wanting to assist, they're wanting to, when do we grow up as Cameroonians, when do we grow up, when do we start doing things for ourselves? You know, uh, uh, this, this problem we are in, if it even keeps persisting, it is because these colonial figures are still present in Cameroon. They are not letting us discuss our matters. They are not letting us take care of our house. They want to stand there as the godfathers to take care of decisions, to make decisions and shove them down our throats, which is what uh, uh, we don't really like to... To, to admit, but that is the reality. Queen Elizabeth is dead and gone, may her soul rest in peace. What is the way forward? The British did not do what we wanted them to do, or they, they are the ones who put us in the mess in which we find our, ourselves. Yes, we've said that many times, but what is the way forward? What is the way forward? The way forward to me is that anyone that stands as a neo-colonial master should be left. Cameroonians and the ones leading Cameroonians should give those contracts to fellow Cameroonians. Uh, 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 Chief Justice men mentioned about training the, the army, but that is just one of the examples. There are many other things that these foreign people come and stand and behave as if they are helping us. We should be the ones building our roads. Why are we training engineers if those engineers cannot work for us? Is it like we, we, we doubt their, their competency? So what is the need training them? Why are we having doctors? Meanwhile, the, the, the most heavily paid surgeons come from abroad. Why do we have our kids into those schools doing all those trainings? Why do we do all these things and then we, we send them out, we ship them out so, uh, so pretext, you know, under the pretext of, of scholarships? And they go there, fabricate medications and sell them back to us. These, these are all forms of, of, of slavery, if I should even put it that way, that we should be thinking of how to separate ourselves from here. We need to go to the other topic. That was just yeah, a heads up. She's touched something very, very interesting. Is yeah. the, what is the way forward? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think the way forward here is uh, um, I have a different view. The way forward, I think we should look towards the Irish solution. In Ireland, after the war that was put up by IRA, they decided to create a political party. That was led by, by Jerry Adams, who was the former military man. And uh, you see where it has landed them. I think that is what we should do here. Uh, after six years of war, I think all Southern Cameroonians should, Cameroonians should join a political party that can enable them to have a grip of power. And that is the solution because the war is being maintained by a political decision. Somebody, some politician is saying, I don't want to stop this war. If you have a Southern Cameroonian up there, the war will stop. So I think the solution is political. We should all join a, a, a party, a political party, that has its feet on the ground, like Reform Party. Join Reform Party. We have as our program, Confederation. You see, we can, we, we can deliver. We can deliver. And I bet you if that is done, even CPDN will not be able to be the party. Because if you imagine the weight of Southern Cameroonians, add that to what Reform Party has. CPDM cannot. It's the solution. Let us stop crying. France wants to impose Frank Beer. Please, let us be realistic. Join the Reform Party and you will see what will happen. We will take that, that place and fix the country from above. I think that, I think that Chief is, is advocating. <laughs> advocating Mr. Kepe, I'll come forward. back to you before. <laughs> That's the way Mr. Kepe, way forward. Way forward because we're already into where we are. 
the only way to deliver Africa is that Africa should be recolonized by Africans themselves. That is a message for those who have ears to hear. Thank you very much. What do you want Thank to say before we, we, we end, yes, the, we end the, this? The way forward. <laughs> you also want the to talk about forward. your party? No, okay. you know, like, I don't need to talk about my party, you know. I always like to give people the liberty to analyze things by themselves and see what they think is best mm -hmm. for them. You understand? We, mm -hmm. we keep doing what we are doing. We know that we're working for the people. But I'm not here to tell people, okay, come and join. You know, because it's talks like this that make people to keep being separated. Because, okay, when we hear that, okay, come and join this one. And the other people like, no, 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 not that one. Come and join this one. We will never be united. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's important for the people to be together. To stand against uh, 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 the present situation and the authorities and everything that we... We are suffocating mm -hmm. on them. And I would also say that Cameroonians in general, whether you belong specifically to a political group or not, we should learn to be patriotic. You know, patriotism simply means that having a strong desire to work for your country, for the benefits of your country. That is the primary advice I'll give to all English-speaking Cameroonians and even some French, because sometimes we keep them aside. But there are some French-speaking Cameroonians that are deeply suffocated by all of these things. All those who understand the, 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 the necessity of being patriotic should do so ceaselessly and tirelessly. Thank you very much for talking on this particular topic. We're talking about Queen Elizabeth, 96 years in power as the queen of the country. And we spoke also about the effect it had on the continent and the monarchy and also our chiefdoms and fondoms if they had to follow that step. So thank you very much to our panelists for analyzing this. Let's go over to our main topic for today. We have at least one hour, 15 minutes to talk about can Cameroon win Qatar 2022? We know that there are a couple of African countries that are going in for it, but we want to focus on Cameroon, the indomitable lions. Qatar 2022, the World Cup is going to start this November, and all the teams are gearing in for and Cameroon. When we look at the history of uh, uh, Cameroon, they have very top, top records before. We knew when uh, things started running down after 2003, with the crisis that the the team had. But people are some people are getting to see some changes and have started believing. I know some people are joining Feka Foot's dream now with the leader Samuel Etofis that Cameroon can win. And we also spoke to some people on the streets. But let's get what our panelists have to say on this big dream. Cameroon since I think their last big win that people really celebrated the nation was in 2003 after the Confederation Cup where the country lost one of their top players, Mark Vivian Fui. Since after that, the, film, the, the team has been going from one problem to the other and the team was declining. But now people are thinking that things are getting better. Do you have that feeling that with the system now in place, Cameroon can, Cameroonians can dream that big dream of winning the top game that an African team can have? Well, I will start by reminding you of what uh, one of the world's best player, football players said. Pele, Arantes, told Eto, your country should be consistent, should keep at, uh, participating in the World Cup. One day you are going to win it. That's what Pele himself said. You should correct me if I'm wrong. Now, can Cameroon really win this World Cup, this edition of the World Cup? Let us look at the group in which Cameroon has been put. That's the toughest group. I mean, Cameroon is going to meet the toughest teams in the world in that group. All right. Can Cameroon win the World Cup? What do we need to win that World Cup? We need to beat those teams, at least two of them, and qualify for the next round. How do we do that? They, we need the players who will be capable um, uh, te uh, capable technically, morally, medically, legally to carry this team forward. When I say legally, most of our players are all professionals. Yeah. And uh, the contracts that they sign with their employers, there are some of them, like uh, Matip, who said, I want to play, but my contract prohibits me. In my contract, it is said that I should not play for my national team. Napoli also came up of late with another thing, a similar thing. 
the president also said, I don't want players, my players to go to the World Cup. Many people were shouting because uh, our Zamboangisa was not called up. I don't know whether it was because of that statement made by the Napoli president or some technique by the, by the staff. But I remember the Napoli president saying that he doesn't want his players to go to the, to the, to the World Cup. So, if you keep this legal uh, impediment aside, you have the medical one. The players have to be physically fit. They have to be make they have to be well. They don't have to, to be suffering from any ailment to go to the tournament. Now, let us suppose that we have players who are physically fit. Psycholo now, they, they are physically fit. Now, let us go to the tournament. <laughs> Do we have the players that can deliver the goods? Almost all our players are playing in top ranking clubs in the world. Yes. All these Brazilian players are no story to our players because they are all playing together. Yeah. The German players is the same. In fact, we have a squad, especially with the new binationals that are coming in. We have a squad that will certainly leave a mark in that World Cup. Um, I mean that. I mean to say that uh, our our players are not likely to suffer from any complex. Okay. If you take that's a big one. Carl Tokwe Kambi, he is doing very well. You take Bomo, who is in England. He is scoring almost every match. Mm -hmm. Well, let us forget those who have gone to other nations, but those that we have. Mm -hmm. Local players. The, look, the, the Cameroonians who have decided to play for the national team, they are doing very well. Okay, so we now have to come to the coaches because... That's another big one. Previously, in 1982, this team, our team would have taken that World Cup, but because of the coaches, who did not have that fighting spirit, the coaches told the players, no, it's enough, stop there. <laughs> Today we have coaches who say no. They have fire in their eyes. We are going for the cup. I think the story will be different because you have good players, you have fighting spirit players, you have coaches who want to go for the kill. I think all the other countries that have to meet Cameroon have to get prepared because they will meet a Cameroon that is a no-nonsense country. Now, can Cameroon do something when it is well prepared? You have seen our performance in the past competitions. Mm -hmm. Whenever the players don't have a problem of their dues not paid, mm -hmm. this time around, there is no such problem. In fact, even the local players that we should call amateurs are all profession professionals now. They are comfortable professionals with a salary of 200000 every month. <laughs> So who are you going to call an amateur? All of them are comfortable. They want a place in the sun. That is the thing. You see, they are led by a toe who is a person who is top ranking there in the world football. A toe has seen and is telling them, look, I have been there. I know what it is. You can win it. These children, if they believe in what a toe is saying, will bring that up here. They are going to bring that up here. Now, do we have what it takes for that cup to come. Let us start by the, the team itself. We need a team that does not concede goals. That means we need to get good goalkeepers. Do we have them? You have Fabrice Ondoa, you have Onana, you have a Passi, you have a whole lot of them. For now, they have been fielding mostly Ondoa, uh, 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 Onana. Yes, Onana. But we have all seen Ondoa. And many Cameroonians prefer Ondoa, a goalkeeper who can, be, while he is playing, you can go to sleep. You know there is no goal. But the other man who starts balls with his legs, I am not there. personally. I'm not comfortable with him. If I have Ondoa in the in the in the pool, I will sleep. I will know that this team can go miles. I'm not saying the other is bad, but I'm not comfortable with him. I prefer somebody who doesn't punch balls, who catches the balls to safety. And uh, he, I mean, he plays well, plays very well. Now, let's go to the defense. We have seen the efforts of the coaching team, the coaching squad, that has gone round to bring 
Because you cannot have a team that is made only of young men. It cannot work. They have brought back Nicolas Kulu. It shows you that they know what they are doing. You need experienced people in that defense. They've called back some old people to see how they can blend with the new, the new blood. Go to the midfield. They've brought back Manjek. George Manjek. We all know Manjek. Yeah. Manjek is doing very well. I think in Norway or Sweden, one of those Scandinavian countries, he's doing very well. So if he is in good form, in top shape, and can play very well, he will be the master of the midfield alongside all the young ones, the Onana, Denise, and all the Onana that we have there, all those other boys who are in the midfield. He will play very well. We need players who can stop the uh, vigor of the Brazilians. Uh, already a man like Vinicius should be having sleepless nights when he looks at Fire Collins. <laughs> he knows that it will not be easy for him. Yeah, defenders. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, when he sees a man like Fire Collins who is going to mark him, he knows that it will not be easy. So we need, we have it's the well players, well. Yeah. we have the players who can deliver. Tolo. Now, <laughs> we have them. Mm -hmm. We have to, like, to yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We have those players. Now you go to the attack. We have seen how they have gone out to scout and bring fresh blood. Because those who were there thought that it was something that was already acquired and they don't need to fight. They told them the places in the national team have to be deserved. And as he has made this temperance uh, squad, I think those other ones, if they are given a chance, they will not play. I, I personally believe that Cameroon can make it, can bring that trophy home. I personally believe. It's not only to physics uh, belief. I know that one day this country will get that, and that day is not very far. That November, I think, if we cross that first round, mm -hmm. that cup is coming to Cameroon. So we should do everything to cross the first round because hey, if we can beat all those big teams, Serbia, there is no other team left. Brazil and Switzerland. We have beaten Brazil twice. We have beaten them twice. The only African team that has beaten them twice. In fact, Cameroon is the only African team that is specialized in beating big teams. <laughs> He's the only one. I mean, even in Germany, when they meet us, they are not at ease. We are drawn before the work of the other last work when we participated. We drew with Germany in Germany. They yeah. forced us to draw. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the ball is round. It's mm -hmm. round for everybody. <laughs> there are no big teams and no small teams. Mm -hmm. So people who think that the World Cup is their reserve should start having a rethink. Because Cameroon is not going there this time. You see, the mentality, the morale. Previously, they also used to say, we want to have a good participation. We have moved from there. Now we are going to bring the cup. I like that and word. I think They used to say good participation. This time, is we are going for the cup. So, I think the honorable uh, uh, participation that we have been having when we said we wanted good participation has been achieved. Now, let us achieve the bringing of the cup. That is our goal. Thank you very much, Senior Barista. I'll, I'll be back with you. Let me talk with Mr. Akipe. Uh, can Cameroon win the Qatar 2022 World Cup? Is it a dream just to have? Or it is possible, given their past records and the situation on the ground at this point? They are playing against the first round, they're in Group G. They're playing against Serbia. They're playing against Switzerland and Brazil. A very strong group. group uh, amongst the groups, which does not have strong teams. Uh, I think uh, all the groups, all the teams that qualified for the FIFA 2022 World Cup played the elimination games yeah. and they deserve their qualification, right? So if there is one team that is going to Qatar not to win, I don't think it should be Cameroon. But that does not mean that it will be easy. They need to play, they will need to play and defeat good teams mm -hmm. in order to get the trophy. Likewise, other countries have been winning, mm -hmm. have been doing the same. Mm -hmm. So it is not a dream, it is an ambition that every serious nation in football should have. You don't go to a tournament to participate. You go to win, because that is where there is a trophy. It's only when you win that you have the trophy, mm -hmm. you have the medal, you have the title. Okay? So if it was just for participation, we'll stay back. Cameroon is going to win. Uh, I don't think our past history we play matches may follow, but they don't resemble themselves. Uh, those who played in 90 are no longer playing. Mm -hmm. 
be it on Cameroon, be it in Brazil. Those who played in the 94 World Cup are not the ones playing today. So the reality of um, football has even evolved, not just its appellation, but even the principles. The principles that were applied in the 90s yeah. are not the same principles that are played here. So he was going to ma uh, combine all these things together. The mastery of the game, the elected nature, the psychological, the team that's going to put all these things together in the right dose will win the World Cup. And we believe that management should put everything in place for the selected 23 to be up to the task of winning this game. If selection is not done on the basis of bias, favoritism, why should we not hope to win the game? Hmm? It is a game that is played 11 man against 11 man, so there is no need putting yourself as a loser. Because on the order, order you're going to play with 11 players, you play with 11 players, you, all of you have a field of 100 by 50 meters dimension and 90 minutes of play time. So there is no doubt that if Cameroon or the, the FA president is having as an ambition to win the trophy, it is everything is possible. Every, I mean, everything is possible. It is a, a game of 11 against 11. Do you think the six that are in now? Games has a better side on the team rather than the pass. Well, uh, I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is the first time we are having a footballer at the helm of an F of the football F in Cameroon. It is uh, we have a senior barrister. I don't know how the bar council will look like if Ashwa Kepe is taken to put at the helm of the bar council, the bar council president. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it can even happen. And I don't know if, if it happens, mm -hmm. how it can move. Mm -hmm. So Who is not a lawyer and they take you to put... That is it. That, <laughs> it <can. laughs> you see? I'm happy he's smiling at that. So let us allow Samuel Leto and his team to manage the FA and the World Cup competition. It is only after the race that we count miles. If we start judging him now, there are things that happen in the dressing room that a male observer might not understand. Every field of activity has its code. They have their symbols. And you must be an actor in that field in order to decode them. Mm -hmm. Understand? Mm -hmm. If it comes at the level of, I used to tell people, even if you take a level home base player and you give them the three colors to wear, just that three colors on them, transform them to another spirit. Yeah, they're carrying a lot on their the shoulders. The day Cameroon was playing in Algeria, <laughs> their last yeah. qualification match, I was somewhere in a snack with friends, with just the two of us who believe Cameroon is going to qualify, even after the Algerian equalizer. Wow, yeah, because yes. it was just a few seconds. We were just the two of us who told me that Cameroon is going until the riff sounds the final whistle. It's not over. The road to Qatar open and at that point <laughs> when that loose ball came in mm. what i told those guys watch this action before i even finish talking the ball was at the back of the net that is what it takes in a competition like this we don't play we win mm -hmm. when we go for the world cup it's not to play play frenzy football to win when you're going for a competition it's not to compete it's, what is essential in football to score the goal and win he who scores one goal more than the other wins. Yeah. So Cameroon is not going to play. Cameroon is going there to win. That is the option. People should try to understand the difference. Because people want us to play, to play scintillating yes, football. No. Yes. In a competition, it's not to play scintillating football. We play scintillating football during uh, friend, friendly uh, encounters. Mm -hmm. In a competition like this, it is, an, it is a principle they call an all or none yeah. principle in physics. It is either you win or you lose. They have seven games to play. That's what the head coach He's putting his, his cards on the table now. He's do, he has done a pre-selection. And Cameroon's already started judging him. Mm -hmm. People should understand what is called pre-selection. I mean that he's trying to build the team. The team is not only about 11 players on the pitch. Yes. The team is about the others on the reserve bench. You should be able to change a player and there's, there's no fall in the temple of the game. So the, I, be, I, feel believe, that change. I believe the head coach Negatively. has done a pre-selection yeah. in order to see if I take this guy who is going to replace him when he's not there. Because it should be it should be only ill health that we can't see somebody like Carl Toko Itambi 
it can be on the on the, on the final list. No, it can be only ill health, injury, or something mysterious. Yeah. We know he's there. Yeah. But then, if on the pitch he has an injury, yeah, what do we, we do? We need somebody to replace him so that we don't feel his effect, True. his absence in the field. True. So that is what is happening in the minds of all the coaches. People started questioning the nature or the caliber of uh, the opponent they are choosing for the friendlies. Football has evolved. There is no small nation today in football. The very football we play in Cameroon is the same football that is played in England. Yeah. The only difference between us and European football is that their marketing is higher than us. Mm -hmm. The difference is not the men. Because the, f the boys will take from our local leagues here when they go to the Excel. Yes, very well. Samuel Eto was not trained in Europe. He left the suburbs of New Bell to do miracles in Europe. Same with the Roger Millers and others. Yeah. Africa has a bunch of talents. As I said in my closing statement, the first topic unless Africans recolonize Africans. Our value will not be felt in the world. The value will definitely not be felt in the world. What do you think? Cameroon, can 2022 Qatar, is it visible or just a dream? I, I would say it's a dream that can <laughs> and I believe will become a reality. <laughs> everything, everything starts with a dream. Yeah. Everything starts with a dream. And I think that Etofis and the coaches and the players, yes, they've all had this dream. Reason why they are preparing the way they are. And um, I want to say that Cameroonians as a whole should strongly support them. Should strongly support them. Morally, they need to know that we are with them. They are not going to Qatar on their own. We are back here in the country, but we are together with them, and we are all waiting for this uh, victory, for this trophy. But you know, when we're talking about if it's going to be a, a success or not, we are looking out the line out of the players, who is the defender, who is the this, who is the that, and all of that. I want to say, uh, when you give responsibility to someone, when you trust someone to do something, it's give them allowance to do what. Yeah they are doing if we have accepted that Etofis is that worthy person that qualified person to be the president of the faker food and song is that qualified person to be the coach let's leave them let's see what we, you know we cannot start criticizing people when we've not even seen what they've done we cannot put people because we believe in their competences and then at the same time we'll say oh no you were not supposed to put this person here you were supposed to why didn't we just do it so I think we should we should keep politics out of the football game we should let these guys go to qatar enjoy themselves as they play the game and bring us the trophy that is what we should be doing we should we should keep politicians should get out of it it is not their domain you know politicians play their own ball on panels like this throwing stones at each other and at, 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 at parties but when it comes to football we should leave it to to the eight of his and and the songs and 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 the players let them train these guys let them make their line out let it of his who has that that a uh, 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 better understanding of what these competitive games are all about he's better placed than any other person to tell these young men that this is where we are going to this is what we are getting into and this is what we can come out of there with with all the comments from from viewers on social media and and other people that are in the faker food team that are just are claiming to to know a lot about the football and all they will not be the ones to go play the games and i really want everybody to understand that the more negative comments we throw at these people the more we we we, we doubt their competences it's playing on their psychological ability it is really going to be a, a, a weakening if they go out there to Qatar and at the back of their minds they're like I, these people had already thought that I am not even qualified to be a defender these people had already thought that I am not qualified to what we should be doing is give them that budoza support give them that that's as Cameroonians we should be patriotic for these guys support them you know if we believe in them we will push them to believe more in themselves 
if we believe in them we will push them to understand that they would they should not drop they should not drop their game mm -hmm. for the sake of not disappointing us you know i want to i want to really look at this from this uh, standpoint that if 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 you're not that president you're not that coach stay away from lining up the players <laughs> Stay away from saying that this is the social person that coach. social media, coach. media coaches. Social yes, social media coaches. You, you know, an opinion is different from from a, 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 a negative criticism. When you're giving an opinion that I think this person, it's not as if the coaches should not listen to the people. Sometimes when you're just the one looking at the matches, you're also able to say, okay, this person is playing quite well. The coach might not be able to and whatever. But in essence, we should keep politics out of this whole thing. We should not be lining out people or saying that people should be put to play the defense or the midfielder or whatever because there are people we like particularly or because there are, there are people we know. We should let the guys do their job. And right now, I think as Cameroonians in general, the major thing we should be doing is praying for these guys to come up with a trophy and giving them the maximum support possible. We can roast them if they don't bring, <laughs> if they don't bring the trophy. But as of now, let's support them. Thank you very much. Let's watch this video. Let's watch this video of some of the games. We'll be right back and then we'll continue with the, the program. Mais les Lions Indons chantent dans les dernières secondes des prolongations. Une victoire. That video, you could just see the the contrast there, like how people were defeated, and then just a couple of seconds to the end of the game. I, I always like what Mr. Akepe said, like when the match is not ended, don't decide. Mm -hmm. Let the seconds, let the refereed decide that the match has ended. Then you say it's over. But if the match has not ended, still have hope in the games. Now let's talk about politics because politics has a huge role to play in football and. We have seen how it has affected the team either negatively or positively at the stakes that are going on now what is the role of politics in football as at now well um previous editions of the world cup have been flawed by uh, political in intervention mm -hmm. we we all saw when samboy the two became president of Africa food the battle he had with the minister of sports uh that had i mean this, this shows that Eto is somebody who is capable of standing up to pressure. Uh, even during his election, yeah. people came out openly to say, don't vote, don't vote for this man. Mm -hmm. But all, after all that said and done, he still won. Uh, you see, to me, it's an indicator that this time around, politicians will not have their way because they have at the helm of Ekafu somebody who is very rich, very influential, and has the opportunity of talk, whispering into some big ears so politics i think this time around will not be able to influence the uh, the events at uh, fika food and the events at the national team uh this is very important because we have politicians ministers who used to call the coach and say you must feel this player mm -hmm. The coach has not in mind some other person. Yeah, not minding if he will they perform say, or not. You that. must feel because he probably is the one who brought the coach in mm -hmm. for his employment. Mm -hmm. So he he feels that he must satisfy this man by fielding that player who is underperformant. So this time around, uh, if it can stand up to the big boss of the sports, <laughs> I don't see I don't see so, who else can uh, venture to come and talk because. He, <laughs> You say the man is not is, is not not uh, has no jurisdiction to do something, and the following day, a letter comes telling you that go and see him, <laughs> see him and get the contract signed. Ah, what is slap in the face? I think this time around the politicians will they will stay away, they will stay aloof, 
And if they stay alive, that calm that brings to mind some other thing. You see, this favoritism. There will be less favoritism because if there is no political influence, the coaches will be allowed to do their job. Mm -hmm. When we talk of the coaches being allowed to do their job, there is also this aspect of favoritism, which is from the coaches who ask the players to give them part of their money. Okay. Mm -hmm. You give me part of your, your dues before I field you. Yeah. We've had it. Mm -hmm. We have players, uh, I think Asu Ekoto revolt, rebelled because of that. He said, mm -hmm. I cannot be coming to play my national team when the coach is asking me for part of my dues. So today we have somebody who is there a to said they should put some and we know that when song was ill it was a to who used his money to cure him to pay for his treatment uh if some needs money i think it will gladly dip his hand into his pocket he has been doing that for fika food so i don't think it's a it's a problem i want to believe that this time around nobody will be asked to give part mm. of his money to be fielded and if that is hap is, is done then we are going to get players who are fit on the day of the match from what I'm seeing, what I see the team trying to do, they are excluding people, they are excluding big names and bringing people who are physically fit, people who are technically good for the job. Mm -hmm. And that is the good thing. We don't like names. We want performance. So if they remain on that performance, I think the politicians will only have to lick their wounds. Thank you very much. Mr. Kepe, do you think he's actually politically free from the activities that are going on? by the definition of politics which is the way a society is managed every sector of the society has its own politics likewise in the back council they have their politics they know how to do it when the elections come they know how they pay their card to put who is there also so i believe football being a business cannot be void of politics but now is it a people inclusive politics is it a politics a to safeguard, so, uh, so, uh, <coughs> protect the interests of the general people. This pol the, 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 the impediment uh, of policy will always be felt in football. But as Barista Rally puts it, this time around, we have a square peg in a square hole at the helm of the FA. Somebody who is not hungry, because that is the problem. Uh, there are certain positions when you put an empty stomach person there, his stomach controls his head. But Samuel, who is not hungry and wants to get a name that he didn't get while on the field of play, I don't think he's going to jeopardize that for one or two persons. Right? All my wish is that let their choice be the best. Let their choice be the one that is going to produce the needed energy to play the seven games. Because to win the World Cup, you need to play seven games losing none okay but talk, talk about politics they will always be because first of all fika food is not a country yeah. the lion is not a country it's a nation cameroon so the image of cameroon first of all diplomatically is in place so there are certain things that cannot just be done at the level of the fa you will need the central administration you need the executive to give you certain visas right but on the technical part of it, we believe we have in place somebody who can score the goals. At that level, I'm not afraid. So we also pray, we also pray that uh, the executive should allow those in charge of the technical aspect to do their work so that we evaluate them at the end of the exercise. But when it comes to influence, it will be difficult for Mr. Anybody to influence the current FA president. I think you need to be Mr. Head of State to influence Samuel Seto's decision at this point in time. That's a big one. Isn't everybody who has a diploma or degree and everything and that is not technically fit that should be listened to at this point because it seems as if we have so many educated people and that everybody feel that their voice should be heard and so they have a right to say something is that what we need at this moment everybody and anybody has a right to say whatever they want to say but it doesn't mean that whatever you say 
will be taken into consideration you know i mean you, you will never stop people from saying whatever they want to say so regardless of whether you have a diploma or a certificate or whatever you think you're having feel free to say whatever you want to say but in saying all of these things try to support the the indomitable lions because i would still uh, insist that it is the the major thing that we can give them you know as citizens of cameroon for this uh, 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 uh encounter that they are going to be having and about the having a say specifically in the faker food and with the choosing of players and and all of that yes it's politics is everywhere that is true but when i say like i said earlier that politicians should stay away from this i am by that meaning that no one should think that because of their power or their position or whatever they can influence a choice or they should be influencing a choice or a decision we should leave the the, the technical crew to judge because they are their best position to properly evaluate to analyze to judge and to determine who is going to play what and when and how we should let them do their work that is just what i am asking or that is just what i am saying that politicians should get themselves off of this it should not be a matter of i am the one who was your godfather while you were still a young boy in the indomitable lions before you went abroad and made the big name you've made so it's time to compensate me we are talking here about a national victory we are not talking here about someone being satisfied because of something they did some time back we are talking here about nat national victory we are not talking here about someone feeling that because they are in a position where they can make decisions they are influential and all they can tell the president of the fika put or the the coach what to do or what not to do people a, a citizen should say whatever they want to say because we won't stop we can't stop them that's the truth we can't stop them but fika foot the president the coach the players cameroonians love you we're supporting you do what you have to do regardless of what people are saying let this be your judgment like i said earlier we will roast you if you don't bring this trophy because we are giving you all the support so we believe in the judgment that these guys are going to we believe in their choices we believe in their judgment and we just have to support them and see what time holds for us why do you think the election of samuel Otto to the top job in fika food has caused a lot of division in the football world and in cameroon in particular because when you follow what is happening you will not imagine the negative things that people will say about him and the way he's carrying on his activity and his team why do you think there's so much hate being poured out and so much division since he got elected to that position what is the problem to you thank you i don't see hate. i don't see division i see enthusiasm uh and excitement on the African scale you, you will notice that contrary to what we may think when we look at social media there is instant unity look a two peace was seen going around all the five teams all the four five countries that have qualified for the World Cup mm -hmm. it was seen going around giving coaching each of them advising do like this do like that let us put up a united force let us put up good performance and I don't, I've not seen one single country that criticized him. They're all applauding. For the first time, we have somebody who is trying to unite African teams, who is trying to see to it that the African teams perform well. Now you come to the local front. We have some excited youth who think that they can contribute their own quarter to the performance of the national team by criticizing. I've seen so, several people come up with tentative uh, <laughs> national team squads. Oh, the attacks you have this one, this one, this one. <laughs> Well, <laughs> social media coaches, social media coach, Facebook coaches, <laughs> they want to criticize Mr. Song, who is a professional. They want to criticize Mr. Eto. Oh, it's for Kafut. Eto has turned himself to a dictator. Mm. It's Eto. It's Eto Fis, who is the coach. It's Eto Fis. Who is coaching? The General Assembly of Fekafut. Fekafut General Assembly takes a decision. You say Eto Fis. Is he is Eto the General Assembly? Blame General Assembly. Are they fools? They have decided that this man is doing a nice job. Let's extend the mandate. What he has in stock cannot be done in four years. Let us extend the mandate to seven. Who is making noise? Nga, 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 nga. Later on, they sit quiet. They say, but these people are right. Fake and is no matter of children. They are people who think well, and they've seen that uh, the, the, the man is doing a nice job. When it comes to salaries of workers, of uh, players, previously, 
Players used to go for nine months without a single dime. Yeah. He comes off at first and says, okay, I want salaries that should be about, I think it was uh, 70,000 or something. So, now he says, no, 200,000. And he even said People those who applaud. have not received should, 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 should get back to him. People applaud, but none of them is asking the question, where, where is that money coming from? Yeah, that's the Nobody. Question. They don't ask the question, where is the money coming from? They say, oh, it's a nice thing for the, for the players to receive the money. You want to eat bread, but you don't want to know how the bread is made. Oh, sorry. I think that these people who are doing all that nonsense, they don't have anything to worry you about know, because... For teeth, the t-shirt and everything, we they see say, the polemic. <laughs> yeah, they say it wants to be manufacturing uh, jerseys and all that. Is it bad? If you can manufacture the jerseys. Because the new... Uh, uh, this new company that has come in to produce, to, to, to give the football equipment. Cox for teeth, yeah. In, it is in that contract that monies have to come to pay the, the players. They don't see it. Yeah, they keep they, criticizing. Yeah. You have some, okay, even if they, don't, they have never uh, sponsored any national team, they have come to your country now and you are seeing the fruits. Why don't you sit and watch? See how far it will go. You start making noise. Why don't they ask where the money is coming from to pay the players? Yeah. They don't. But it is coming from that, that contract. Yeah. It is not performing any witchcraft. Anyway, I know that Mr. Eto is known for giving results. And when the time comes, he has his famous uh, phrase, pep, 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 parler encore. <laughs> when he delivers, he will say, pep, 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 parler encore. He will tell them, you used to make noise, talk again. And I, I know that he will deliver. And all those fellows who are excited will know that excitement doesn't carry you to anywhere. Allow the professionals to do their jobs and you will see that things will go on correctly. Mr. Kepe, we know uh, it office is very rich and they say some rich people are very arrogant. Uh, do you think this has had a negative role on his elections? Because many people, even though not all, we have those who are supporting. But when you read what is happening, this is the first time that I really see an outpour of anger from some people on the scenes he, has, he was elected. They are not willing to support anything that he's doing. We know everybody cannot support, but when we look at the number of rights up, the number of people going on air, the number of people saying things, of which the results are even better than what we used to have before. What, what do you think is a the problem? There are some people who are happy with negativity or in negativity. And there is, is no... calling. <laughs> and there is no human being on planet Earth who have unanimity, who has unanimity of love. Here, we, our introduction was about Her Majesty, may I so rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Barrister salutes her prowess. Mm -hmm. I decided that I did not say anything good to, to salute about it. Mm -hmm. That is our human nature. We look things, in journalism we say we report news from different angles. Mm -hmm. We might attend this, the same event, mm -hmm. we, repeat, we report differently. So it is not surprising to me that Samuel Eto is not making unanimity even if it is two or three, four, five persons, that is how it's supposed to be. And I want to say to him that he should not think for him to succeed. He must work with everybody. No. He cannot also listen to everybody because everybody's opinion will not count in, in his plan of action. When he was drawing his plan of action, everybody was not there. He didn't consult everybody's point of view. So at certain moment, he must pass like lightning when lightning pass, there are some that is strike to death. Mm -hmm. That is how he must. We have passed 13 years in this country without football. Some of those who are opposing Samuel Leto today are sadly club presidents. Yeah. None of them have been able to tell us what have become of their clubs, their club managers, and the club for these 13 years. How much have they been paying those people? How have they been living? 13 years in darkness. At certain point in time, you have to let go your ego. You have to accept to lose, not just for your interest, for the interest of the majority. That is what I think every normal thinking Cameroonian should sit quiet now and observe it to and esteem do what they are doing. They will leave the stage one day. Yeah. They had the, uh, the General Assembly just giving them power to audit the books and bring to book all those who have uh, the FA money in their pocket. Meaning tomorrow, if he is not also there, such an activity will be carried out 
and he'll be brought to book. So I don't see why they con some people want us to continue losing football, which is a sport, which is an activity on whom so many families depend on. Yeah. For 13 years, there are people who have gone unemployed for 13 years. Wow. You understand? So I'm not surprised, and uh, the antagonism will continue until the day he's going to leave office. So there will be no point along his mandate, all the time he's going to be in office, that everybody will applaud for him. There are certain aspects that I don't applaud. There are some people who work with him that I hate them in my DNA. I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to say it. But then, for the love of the game, and knowing that so many young Cameroonians depend on that, I sit quiet. Even when those people are at the forefront saying what is nonsense, I just sit quiet because I know it is for the time being. At least for the past eight to nine months, football has played. The actors have lived on their efforts. Mm -hmm. Interpols are going on now. Yeah. You need to see the crowd in the field. Yeah, you need to for see the, act the, the spectators in yeah. the field. I stopped watching or going for foot football games some 15 years ago. Some of us sat under the scorching sun in Douala to watch Mount Cameroon play, to watch you know, Douala play. We bought, we bought cartoon to sit on concrete. <laughs> but all That's what football. football managers were doing was not for football, but for their private. I think we have somebody who is not perfect anyway. Yes. But who has as an objective to give life to football. We should give him the benefit of doubt. For the love of the nation and for the love of the game, I'm calling on all those who think football should always continue to be playing in courts should rethink mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there is no perfect man on planet earth even the bible you say god is good so there's even no better man if god who is the creator of the, the world can only be good then who are we man cameroon has been for the past 13 years cameroon is had more in the football courts than on the football pitch true it is not good honestly we From might disagree the they are free to disagree they are free not to work with him they are free not to work with him. because everyone cannot work with him understand yeah but stay keep beating my chest that i'm taking the fa back to court honestly it's no longer a pride it's an insult to those person themselves but first they don't see it that way Let's talk about Cox Sportif. What do you think about the new contract that was signed? Uh, Emanuela, even where you are working today, the law says a contract can be terminated at all times. Mm -hmm. The consequences are there. The consequences are there. If we have a fixed contract, there are modalities that such a fixed contract can be terminated before the time. If we have a contract of an unfixed duration, mm -hmm. there are still modalities that such a contract can be terminated yeah. before time. So I don't see any problem with the FA terminating the contract with Cox Sport. It was just the contract. It's not a, a new, it wasn't another new colonial part. Yeah. Was, before Cox there was another equip, a, a kit supplier. Mm -hmm. The contract ended. If a new FA president and the new team came came in and discovered that they were not deriving satisfaction yes, from the, the, the from Cox Sportive, it is their right to terminate the contract. Yeah. And Cox Sportive sued them to court. If the court finds that the FA was wrong, they pay damages. I don't know why all the big, all the noise coming from left and right. Yeah. It, it is not another colonial pact that somebody signed so many years ago and we are suffering from it. I stand with the FA in that decision. In every decision you take, what are good or bad is there are consequences. Mm -hmm. And the greatness of a man is measured 
in his ability to take responsibility for his act. Yeah. Like the so, coaching, the, the former coach who was removed. He definitely. Those, and they took responsibility. In his contract, it was decided that you must win the, the African Champions, the African Cup of Nations. Yeah. We saw how he was unable to change the game at the semifinal against Egypt. Yes. The game was, we lost the game at the level, the technical level. Yes. It was at the level of the players. We saw that he was limited. Yeah, because the players were fit. So the coach, <clears throat> the FA president, took that risk mm -hmm. of resiliating his contract. He he's, knew. he's free to take the FA to court. Yeah. We present fact against fact. Who wins? The other person pays damage. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying it, I'm going to say it. The greatness of a man is known in how he takes his, de his decisions and stands by it. Honestly, I salute the FA in their decisions. Before taking these decisions, I believe they have consulted their legal bench. Yeah. But unfortunately, since the law has never been written smoothly <laughs> to solve a problem, <laughs> all laws are written <laughs> to solve <laughs> and create another problem. If not, barrister, their chambers will be empty. Thank you very much. <laughs> he, has, he, has, he seems to have a liking for the <laughs> no, I have a lot of respect. A lot of respect for the profession. Because I believe it is one of those professions where I've seen junior colleagues respect their senior colleagues with reverence. Yes, yes. For that you, have, you have the bar and you have the military. Their respect is demonstrated. It is end. I mean, so I have that respect for that those two professions. Thank you very much. Let's come back to Queen Yvette. You you're a football fan no not many women follow football but they're at least cameroon in cameroon many women do and i know you've been following since the time of the election up to now what can you say about samuel little fees and have you been getting more positive receiving at your end reading on social media even on tv because you have people going on air all the time um, from the time when little fees was declared a uh, president of the faker foot you know people there were, the atmosphere was mixed about this so we had this group of people that were excited because he's a young person and there is this feeling that oh finally one young person getting up there to the top which was great but a, a good majority of people were condemning oh he's so haughty he's a proud man he's this and from a perspective, I would say that he's this kind of, your people always mistake a strict person, a decisive person, with a proud person. Though there was, there was this about the constitution of the fake food, you know, when that modification came, I was also of the opinion that we should watch it of a little keenly. Because, and you will not blame Cameroonians for thinking and saying that he's wanting to become a dictator one beating twice shy so anything anything that is beginning to seem like someone who is wanting to seize power and hold on to power and not give up on power sends negative waves to cameroonians as a whole and that is the way it came across to cameroonians when the mandate was extended and i will say again that we cannot blame cameroonians for reacting in that manner because experience has proven and it is still proving that people will will speak sweet words and make uh, 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 the, other, the citizens to trust them, believe them. But when they get into that position of power, they hold on to it. They don't want to give up. This, to me, explains the reason for the reaction of Cameroonians when the mandate was, was extended. But overall, I think that um, if Mr. Itofi should continue with his same decisive uh, decisiveness, which I do not see as arrogance, if he should continue with the same decisiveness, it would do a lot of good for the national team. I mean, the others that we think were not arrogant, what did they do? So if someone comes with an attitude that seems to be arrogant, but he does good, you know, we should, we should forget about focusing on Etofis and we should look at what he's doing. Our interest is not even him. Our interest is his role for the national team. I think we are, we are, we are losing focus. Cameroonians are losing focus. Instead of looking at what he's doing as the president of the Faker Foot, they're looking at who he is in his personal life as a person. Mm -hmm. Even if he is arrogant, no problem. He should go on with his arrogance, but let him work. Let him do the work for which he has been placed there to do. That is what I think should be uh, uh, 
our focus. focus. Yes, that should, that's what I think should be our focus. And um, with regards to to the general opinion of, of people uh, about him being to uh, uh, wanting to become a dictator, it is true that from that time of that release of, of, of that information, many people have turned or are turning their backs on it fees. And I will repeat again, if there is any thought like that lingering around his mind, then I hope he knows that he's disappointing the youth of Cameroon a lot. You know, he should work with the mandate he has been given already. He should work with the mandate he has been given already. And if time comes when there has to be an extension, let the people see from the fruits that truly he has done his work and he needs a little more time to do more you don't just get into seat and then you're extending mandate when what 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 exactly what exactly has been done yet is just the, the the start of the show i believe that he has a lot of things in in mind for the for the national team which he has times uh, well seven years is not that much time though it has been extended from i think four to seven yeah so in seven years he can do a lot of things let him work with the seven years if, if that is what needs to be done let him work with it our team needs a lot of repairs which i think that there are certain projects that actually cannot be completed in a short span i am of that opinion there are certain projects that cannot be achieved in a short span and it even brings more uh, less productivity when you start a project and then your mandate expires and then another person has to come in and continue from vision, yeah lack of continuity they, they will not he will not carry the dream or the yeah, vision yeah. the way you who started that project had yeah. but i think seven years is relatively good mm -hmm. for um mr etofis to do something significant and remarkable for the 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 the, the indomitable lion the mm -hmm. national team you understand so but a citizen should give him a break Okay, so uh, Barista, let's talk about the role of social media and television. We know the media has a lot to do when it comes to psychology of people and how handling things. We know when people want to pass out a message or even uh, you watch BBC and CNN, when there's, they, they decide that they want people to believe this, that's the only thing you will see to the world. Comes. That's the only thing you see. They keep on doing it over and over and people get to accept that idea in their heads that this is what things have to be and let's look at the role of the media in general not only social media in Cameroon and the effects on the team do you think it's really helping out and it's going to affect them negatively or positively well um, Emanuela will a youth throw a stone at a mango tree that has no fruits definitely no thank you it is only when the tree is laden with fruit that youth will start shooting stones mm -hmm. because they hope that the some fruit may fall for them to pick mm -hmm. that's just what is happening in the social media because these fellows they've seen a great man and they think that they can participate in bringing him down <laughs> they, they cannot unfortunately for them they cannot bring him down what is a tofis gaining from fika food some people just i at times i ask myself what do these Cameroonians really want this is a man who is president of fika food and does not even take his salary he doesn't collect his salary when he was playing on national team he was not collecting his his dues now he's not even collecting his salary of fika food he's giving them more money and they are still making noise they say he wants to be a dictator so if he remains in fika for seven years of what benefit financially is that to him why don't why can people not think this man does not have any financial benefit flowing from his being president he is there just because he has a dream to fulfill and like Emanuela said there are projects that cannot be carried out he is now president for about two years mm -hmm. okay look at the guinness super league the female football because when we're talking national team we seem to be looking at only, only the male, the male section, yeah. even the male national team you have the senior one then you have the a prime mm -hmm. the, the, the a prime then you have the junior yes then you have the under under eight uh, uh, under 17. Mm -hmm. there are many national teams this man is making an effort to that each team remember when cameroon went to uh, uh, uh zimbabwe i think zimbabwe our female team had a problem there he had to go rescue six players who were kept behind 
They were removed by the authorities of that country and kept there. I think it was Zimbabwe. Kept there so that they should not play, play for Zimbabwe to win. It went there and rescued these girls and brought them back. Nobody said anything. You have a football association president who is actually doing his job, who is there for the players. He is there for the players. He is not only there for the players, he is there to see to it that the federations, the federation works very well in all its compartments. Since when did we have a youth championship in this country? Yeah. My, my brother was clapping for Interpools. Since when? He has not even been there for up to two years, but you have plans of new stadia to be built by Fika Foot. Bamenda is on the line. I mean, what do you really want? This is somebody who is there to work and to give football in this nation a better image. I think what we should do is to, like uh, Madame was saying here, Madame Ka was saying, let us forget about all this negative criticism. Allow this man to work. Let us judge him from what he does and stop looking at every action as a calamity. For now, we have only one focus. In a few months, in November, mm -hmm. World Cup is coming. What do we gain by trying to, to bring down this, this giant who is actually our torchbearer? Who wants if an African team for the first time to bring the World Cup? I mean, look at all the five participating teams. How many other teams have that ambition to bring the World Cup? It's only Cameroon. Senegal. I heard Senegal, their coach said, Senegal is the best African team. Does he have the ambition to bring the World Cup? He doesn't. His own trouble is within Africa. Senegal is the best African team. Eto wants Cameroon to bring World Cup. You see the difference? I mean, this man has a big vision. But these small, small twats, social media twats, they think they can bring a giant down. They are dreaming. And as I keep saying, when the time comes, he will do it and tell them, pep, 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 parlez encore. <laughs> and their mouths will be short. <laughs> what do you, Mr. Kepe, what do you think the role of the media should be at this moment? Because we know the media, they actually pay setters. We see how in the Western world they use the media to set the pace. What do you think our media should be doing now? What do you think the, the role of the media at this moment? I would have given a panacea if I had the money to pay the media. But unfortunately, I do not have. And he who pays the piper, the, taste, the tune. Uh, since most media organs are very good in scandals, because in French you say, la presse c'est trois ex. Le sex, le sang, le scandal. And they like where there is scandal. Unfortunately, our local media have not learned anything from Western media. You take the case of the Ukraine war, Ukraine, the Russo Ukraine war. They have chosen what to tell the world. Mm -hmm. They are not telling the world the neg They are not telling the world the negative impact that Europe is feeling in no. this crisis. They are instead telling the world that Africa is dying of hunger, and out of 80 boats that have left Ukraine with wheat, only two have mistakenly come to Africa. The rest have gone to Europe. So if we really love our African continent, we should also tell the world what is good about Africa and keep what is bad for our local consumption. Because there is no perfect society in the world. There is no perfect continent or perfect country in the world. The same floods we have here in Douala, we have worst floods in the US, yeah. in India, in Europe, okay? But you hardly see them paint that type of image when natural disaster hits. But when it hits here, we project it, and that is where Sima said that we make the best out of it. I think uh, we should sell the positive part of our national team. We should send, we should sell the strength of our national team so that it should go also as a shock to our opponent. But on the contrary, we shall be instead selling the strength of our opponent so that it comes as a shock to us. That is a sub side of our media organs. I cannot really tell them what to do because maybe their editorial policies, their different media houses know what to do in order for them to get 
paid at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. That's a very complicated one. We are almost to the end of the program. We'll just give last words to conclude. What do you hope for the team? Last wishes for them. Yeah, I, I hope that we get the victory. I hope that the president of the FICA Food does his job and that uh, eventually people will look at him from the perspective of the president and the work he's doing and not from just the perspective of a person. And I hope that Cameroonians and the media in particular will get out of this usual buzz mm -hmm. of spreading just the negative to get likes and views and followers. Mm -hmm. But uh, think of the image of the country and um, fellow citizens that are tarnished by all this negativity, these negative vibes. It's destroying us from the outside. It's destroying us even from within. So if we can desist from that, if media can desist from that, if individuals can stop manipulating their Facebook pages to post uh, 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 the negative, negative uh, information about people, about organizing, in short, about Cameroonians, yeah. it will help us a great deal. So um, to the team, we are looking up to you. We are together with you, and we will be celebrating with you when you bring back the trophy. Thank you very much. Last word, Barista, what do you hope and wish for the team? Not only the team, the for nation the Cameroon. But for the teams. The teams. The teams. The it's just that we were, we we're talking about Qatar 2022. The male team is going to Qatar, and the female team is going to uh, Swiss and uh, New Zealand, I think. Uh, New Zealand. New Zealand. The last round for the I yeah. wish for them that they qualify in the, play, in the run offs. Yeah so that they actually participate in this World Cup. Now, uh, social media can also be positive. I want uh, my, our people to use the positive side. Yeah. Please, if, it's you, not bad. if you know of Cameroonian players who are in some countries that are not publicized, it is time for you to use your social media, bring them to the limelight so that the coaches can see them. Yeah. That way, we can strengthen our team. Don't begin to throw stones at a glass boss because our boss, if he catches, if the stones catch the glass, will just will break, and uh, I mean that would uh, it hurt us. Mm -hmm. So please use the social media positively. And the media in general. Use the media positively to the advantage of Cameroonians. Yeah. We are not interested in your negativism. Mm -hmm. Forget mm. Neg negativism because that is the devil's work, and we don't believe in the devil. Please make let all hands be on deck. For these countries' uh, teams to sail uh, uh, successfully mm -hmm. to Qatar and New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Kepe. Well, I should leave the name. The name does not even exist. It's just a caricature to lure people to remain in bondage. Mm. The name does not actually exist. It is you and I who exist. So the devil is it's it's from, it's within. That, that imaginary person does not exist. It's within. It is you and I exist. So we should stop throwing granite peelings as we move around town. Mm -hmm. Each of granite peelings put in a plastic and throw in a dustbin. It starts from what, there. It's, it begins from there. Mm -hmm. That is how if uh, today a war is not won in court with the use of arm. The greatest arm of the world, the, the greatest uh, arm used today in winning the war is the media. Media. We should also use the media in this our footballing campaign because it begins from there. It builds up the psychology. Yeah. It builds up the moral. Mm -hmm. We need to make our opponent to know that we are not coming to play. Yeah. We are coming to win because a competition is not played. It is won. You consider each match as a final. That is why the coach should have two teams. When player A is injured, player B comes in with the same Strength. firing yeah. metal. Yeah. So we wish them all the best. Thank you very much, gentlemen and madam. Thank you for your time. This program will be rebroadcasted on Monday at 3 p.m. local time, 2 p.m. GMT on Afric Media. And the program was going on live on our Facebook page. You just put Afric Media and scroll down. You're going to see the program. You can share it. So stay tuned to programs on Afric Media. Have a beautiful weekend in our company. God bless you all.